Firstly, very importantly, make sure you've installed QuickTime. And also note that this tutorial, tutorial uses Mathematica 9. It would also work in other versions of Mathematica as well. Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to make a video data player like this in Mathematica, where we can interactively change the frame, of, scroll, scroll through a video, changing the frame of a, a video, and then see the data play along synchronized with that. And then I'll show you how to make a GIF of this. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a web browser and go to my GitHub profile. And you can copy, you can get this link in the description and copy it. Go to the repositories and click on this video waveform player tutorial. And for this, you'll need Mathematica. So just go here and say download zip and then let it download and that is just downloading to my desktop right now and so I'm going to go and open up the downloaded file and then we can extract all of these files and they just, just um, go to a default folder. So now what I'm going to do, notice that there's a few different files. So you can read the README, but I'll just tell you for now. It's uh, two files mainly uh, that we're going to look at. One is a video of a frog swimming along. And that video lasts one second. And then the other one is a data file of um, angle, uh, geometric angle of the hip as it moves through time, and that's also a one second duration file. But the sampling rates are different. The video frame rate is 62 hertz, and the data sampling rate is 125 hertz, and I'll show you how to deal with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this address, and then minimize that. And then we're going to start a new notebook over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is point to this directory, set directory, double quotation marks, and then copy. And I always select yes, and then let it then uh, evaluate the cell. And then we want to pull out that first um, that, that video file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import it. And the first thing I'm going to do is find out how many frames there are. So I'm going to say a variable called n frames equals import the video. So the video is called frog kick 62 hertz dot avi. And import has many options for importing a, um, AVI files. I'm going to import this first as a frame, kate, frame count so we can find out how many frames there are. And there's 62 frames. And that'll be helpful for uh, knowing things later. And then I'm going to import the actual uh, AVI itself, the actual video, and I'm going to import it as a stack of frames, a stack of images. So I'm going to call that frames equals, I'm going to use the same import command, I'm going to copy paste that. Very important, let's put a semicolon afterwards, and let's call this image list. And let that run. It might take a few seconds. So now we've loaded up each frame as an image. So if I index this, it's just going to be a list of frames. So if I look at the first one, that's what that one looks like. If I look at the 50th frame, you can see the frog has moved some distance. So um, hopefully that's self-explanatory. So the length of this list of the frames is just a list should be 62, and that's correct. OK, now what I'm going to do is make a little interactive player using the manipulate command. So manipulate, 
first of all needs to have uh, something to interact with. We'll call it frame. You can call it whatever you want. So we want a slide bar that goes from frame one to the whole length of the video, which is n frames. Importantly, we want to put a one here. Um, and that tells it to go in increments of one and not increments of in, be in between one. So if you forget that one here, uh, Mathematica is going to get angry at you. So now what we're going to do is say frames and then tell it which frame to index out. And then let's run that. And by the way, every time you run a manipulate, right before you run a manipulate command, just save your file because you never know what's going to happen. Mathematica might crash sometimes. So anyway, we can have this little interactive player, and that's great. So we've learned how to load up the data. I'm going to get rid of this little frame here. And then another cell, I'm going to load up the actual um, hip numerical data from before. So um, hip angle data equals import frog kick 125 hertz dot txt and I'm going to open that as a list and I'll leave the semicolon off so just so you can see the data there are the data here so I'm going to put the semicolon back get rid of that data Okay, so now we have our hip, hip angle data. Let's plot it just to show you what it looks like. I'm going to use list line plot hip angle data. Okay, so that's pretty good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just style this plot a little bit so it's easier to read. I'm going to label it plot plot label is, actually we don't need the brackets, is hip angle. So that's just the geometry, the geometric angle of the hip joint of the frog as it kicks through time. So you can see it rising through time. And so the, the y-axis is degrees and the, the x-axis is actually samples. And this is sampled at 125 uh, samples per second. So this is one second worth of data. Another thing I'm going to do is define the range. Plot range. And that will become obvious later on. It's not obvious right now. I'm going to say we're going to go from 1 to 125 on the x-axis and whatever, um, 90 to 180 on the y-axis. And I'm going to call that graph, well actually no, I'll just leave it as, as it is. So that's what it looks like. And now I'm going to put, I'm going to glue together two images. One is an image of this plot and the other is just the image of the frame of the frog video. So I'm going to do that by putting everything in a manipulate command, like we did before. And I'm going to copy paste what I did before. You can put as many lines of code as you want in the manipulate command, as long as you use semicolons. Otherwise, you use semicolons for everything except for the last line. So I'm going to say image, so frog image equals equals this. That's pretty straightforward. And the plot image equals um, what we had before. So I'm just copy paste, pasting that, but I'm going to modify it so that it updates along with the frog data. So hip angle data. And I'm going to say I'm going to index out, I'm going to slice out using the double, double semicolons between one and frame. Okay, and let's 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a semicolon on this top one and I'm going to get rid of the semicolon on the bottom one. So the manipulate is going to have an interactive plot here. So as I manipulate this frame, it goes, but it only goes part of the way. It only goes to 60 or so. And that's because the number of frames of the video doesn't, don't match the number of samples in the data because they have different sampling rates. So what I'm going to do, assuming that the video is synchronized with the data, I'm going to make a ratio of sample rates. So we know from the file names and from the readme file that, that the uh, sample rate of the data is 125. So I'm going to make a ratio variable equals um, 125 divided by 62, which is the video frame rate. So now what I'm going to do is multiply this frame times our ratio. So basically the, the frame of the, the data sample uh, catches up with the video. And Mathematica doesn't like that because we're inputting a non-round number ratio equals some un uneven number. So what I'm going to do is round that off so it's an integer because Mathematica doesn't want to in index non-integers. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, we have to account for the differences in sample rate of the two, and that's just mul that's why I'm multiplying by the ratio of the sample rates. So now hopefully this data goes to the end, and that's great. So how do we show both this image and the frog image at the same time? That's actually very simple. So I'm going to put a second semicolon here and do a third line. And I'm going to use this command called graphics row. And you can look up in the help file what this is. And there's, it has different relatives. It has graphics columns as well but we'll use graphics row. And you can put in, literally just put in the images, frog image and plot image. And then so now we have both of them synchronized as a little in, interactive tool. And a couple last things. If you didn't define the range, then this range would try to update automatically. You wouldn't see this nice little graph going along with it. And um, another thing um, is that you can change the size of your plot. Um, you can say image size, let's say equals 800. So that'll make it bigger. You can change it however you want it. So I'm going to go back to the default. Now, finally, I'm just going to show you how to how to, how to make this into an animated GIF, let's say for a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to get rid of the manipulate so it stops dynamically updating. I'm just going to copy paste my code in another cell and call this animation. So animation, and I'm going to replace the manipulate with the table command table command has the same format as the manipulate. It just saves everything as a list of data. And I'm going to put a semicolon at the end. That's important. So I'm going to run this. And so my animation is just a list of frames. We can check that. And there it is. So I'm going to export that as an animated GIF. So export your GIF dot gif, dot gif. Mathematica will figure out that it's an animated gif based on the extension. And you say animation. And then it should work. Hopefully your computer doesn't run out of memory. And uh, it's keep still going. Um, all right, that should have worked. And Another thing to keep in mind, what I like to put on, is something called display durations. And that gives 
a millisecond delay between each frame. And this can be a single value for all frames, or it can be a list of values so you can change the frame rate between frames. So I usually define that so that a web browser uh, can have some sense of how fast or slow you want it to play. So that's it. Hope this was useful.